What's up, everybody, and welcome to the big one. <laughs> this is uh, this is the Laser Everything live stream. We're talking about light burn for Galvo lasers. Uh, I've got a bunch of our Discord podcast staff members here with me, uh, and we are going to walk you guys through some of the features, how they've been implemented. We're going to test some things out. You can see in the top left corner here, we do have our webcam, uh, which is set up right with the fiber laser right now. Um, and we're going we're gonna to try to do some stuff that we don't know how to do. We're going to do some stuff we do know how to do. Uh, we're just going to kind of like push the software to its limits today. I'm going to show you guys where everything is hiding. Um, so we're going we're gonna to get on all of that and we're going to get on it right now. Um, just really quick, I'd like to just shout out a couple people we've got hanging out in chat. Uh, David Stewart. Uh, what is up? Uh, AK-47 is here. James Shelton, great to see you as always. We've got Kevin. We've got Jason. Uh, we've got Vic. What's up, Vic? Matt B. Hanging out with us again. Nannerpuss. Ben Sickles. It's a crowded room today, guys. Joseph is here. What's up, Joseph? Uh, you know, just uh, a lot, a lot of people. Eric K. Uh, hanging out with us today. Darren is here as well. So, um, oh, what's up, Wes Smith? Omar, how's it going, guys? Uh, 49 viewers right out of the gate. Do not forget to smash that like button. Let's get this in front of as many people as possible because this is going to affect everything going forward. Uh, this, is a, this is a really, really big development in, in our world, guys. Um, this is going to change the way that we work. This is going to change the way that we play. This is going to change the way that we interact with each other. Um, this is just, it's, it's huge, huge news. Um, and we're going to get started right now. So, um, we've kind of got like this multi-screen setup kind of running at the moment. It's a little weird, but, um, we're going to work with it. So, uh, light burn for Galvo live. Uh, here it is. Um, if you haven't already seen the post, there's a couple things. I'll, I'll just leave that up for a minute. There's a couple things that I want to chat with you guys about really quick. I just want to cover a couple basic things, uh, before we get two into this today um just super duper fast so uh it's a closed private beta you cannot download this beta uh jason over at lightburn has to activate your uh your specific license number in order for you to use the software so don't listen to anybody saying that they can get you a copy that's working with galvos or whatever early uh that's just not the case uh jason specifically has to go in and activate your specific license in order to enable this functionality you also notice uh we're on a special version 1.0 what is it 4 or something it's like the most recent uh main uh version of the software we're on 1.1 uh, so we are using a special copy of Lightburn as well. Uh, and there's also some weird driver stuff that you have to do right now in order to get Lightburn and the laser to talk. Shouldn't be permanent, uh, but there's there's a, kind of a lot of specialty stuff that you have to do to get things set up right out of the gate. So um, with that covered, um, uh, just some, some other common questions. Uh, how much is it going to cost? We don't know. It's probably going to cost just as much as the DSP version. There may be like a prorated rate if you already own the DSP version. They haven't settled on a final number, so don't listen to rumors about that. There's no solid answer on that yet. Um, uh, where Let can me, you see it? Can I say something? Yeah, what's up? So, so think about this for the pricing in case someone's going to like really get their hairs tied up. Um, I was literally about a week away for He's dropping sixteen hundred dollars. Sixteen. I was literally. I was talking to J Mac, and I was like, a week away to going Easy Cat Three. So, whatever the fee is to go to Lightburn, take my money. I'm sorry, just take it. Totally. It's better than dropping sixteen hundred dollars. Just, just an example. So, totally. Just wanted to say that. Um. If you're wondering if you can be a beta tester, uh, just keep an eye on the channel. As soon as you are able to become a beta tester, I will make a huge announcement here, letting you all know uh, exactly what you need to do, how to get it installed, set up, uh, you know, running it, things like that. It's just, it's a closed private beta right now, so not uh, at the time. Uh, what boards are supported? EasyCAD 2 and EasyCAD Lite boards and cloned EasyCAD 2 boards are all currently supported. Uh, no easy CAD three and no 3d functions. So if you have a 3d laser, uh, probably not in, in the pipe for you in the near to mid future. Um, because easy CAD threes, 
3D stuff is really complicated, and those kind of the framework for that just isn't in Lightburn yet. Um, so, so you're going to be waiting a while, but, uh, hopefully easy CAD three in general soon, uh, all of the easy CAD two boards currently supported also Mac windows and Linux all supported. So, uh, no longer are you locked down to windows. We're just kind of whipping through these. Uh, just so you guys know, we did a, uh, two full length podcast episodes on this topic today. So you'll be able to listen to that and we expand on some of these topics a little bit more. And I also shot a regular video episode uh, with these guys where we do kind of like a general overview. We're going to be covering a lot more of that in the live stream, but the live stream is going to be sloppier. So if you want it nice and compact, I'll be editing that video later today as well. Um, uh, will this be better than EasyCAD? You're about to find out the answer is a resounding yes. Uh, what if I have an EasyCAD 3 board? Um, your SOL for now, you can either wait for EasyCAD 3 support, which may be soon. It may be a year. We don't know. They haven't done uh, a ton of that legwork yet, so we just don't know how complicated it's going to be for them to accomplish that. Um, the other option, and this is something that I'm going to do, uh, is you can downgrade your board. So uh, I bought a $250 uh, uh, EasyCAD 2 board off AliExpress, and um, it's on the way in the mail. We're actually going to downgrade the UV laser, which is running uh, uh, EasyCAD 3 right now. We're going to downgrade that to EasyCAD 2. So if you want to know how to do that, uh, there's a full video coming on it. I placed the order yesterday. The EasyCAD 2 board will be here soon uh, for us to do that okay um let's see it's Three weird saying recovery. downgrade but it's really an upgrade it's really an upgrade right <laughs> uh, unless you have again a 3d laser in which case that's going to cause problems for you uh uh it's very similar to easycad the setup and 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 how it works and stuff uh so if you've just learned how to use easycad and you don't want to switch softwares uh trust me it's not that bad it will be worth it and it's, it's very easy to switch over um, the, the stuff you're learning how to do in EasyCAD is going to make using Lightburn for Galvo a breeze. So stick with EasyCAD. Keep learning how it works because all of that knowledge is going to apply to you using Lightburn for your Galvo laser. Okay. Um, if you're wondering whether or not we're going to continue making EasyCAD content uh, with this recent development, the answer is yes. Uh, EasyCAD content will continue to be produced on the channel. So um, just because this is happening and we're likely going to use this the majority of the time, as all of you should, um, there will still be uh, uh, EasyCAD content, especially before Lightburn is available to the public. Uh, before Lightburn is available to the public, we will be doing episodes where we update you on the development, but we're not going to be using Lightburn in tutorials until everybody can use it. So um, don't worry. EasyCAD still going to be a laser everything staple. It's still going to be on the channel. Uh, you're, you're not going to just stop getting EasyCAD tutorials. Uh, you, you will continue to see that too. Um, and I think that's it. So that was kind of my, my main points because I just those are the questions that have just been asked uh, just nonstop since the announcement. So I wanted to cover those and their answers here. Um, let's see. Uh, they're uh, do, do, do. I'm a little behind. Uh, oh, OK, Jason says in chat, we will likely not have an open beta. OK, so there won't be a there won't be an open beta. Uh, that's not something that you guys can look forward to, unfortunately. Uh, but we'll be curating volunteers, so they'll be looking for help. Uh, we aren't looking for users, but real testers to hammer on it and find bugs. They want people who have the free time to sit there and intentionally try to break the software so that they can fix those things before releasing it to the public. It's actually a lot of work, um, and it, it takes a, a significant amount of time. So, um, you know, they're, they're going to be a little picky about, I guess, who their beta testers are rather than just opening mm -hmm. it up to everybody. Uh, so that makes sense. I'm glad I saw that comment because I missed that in chat. Um, just kind of flipping through uh, the different chats here. I just wanted to catch up because I kind of went on that. Um, I just kind of went on that that little rant there. Um, Forged through fire says light burn. Take my money. <laughs> Mac PC with fiber CO2 mine too. Galvo and a UV in process. Yeah, light burn can have all of our money. Um, and this uh david says this is a public live yep uh we're, we're live right now so we're going to uh we're gonna dig in right let's do it let's use the software 
Uh, let's run through some of its basic, uh, you know, functionality. I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm going to anyway. This is a beta. Every single thing that you see in this video is subject to change and doesn't represent the uh, the final release of, of what this product you know may look like when it's when it's ready for users. Okay, we're looking at experimental software here, um, and everything is still being changed, tweaked, and worked on every day. So do not expect what you see in this video to represent the final version of the software uh, because it's a beta. All right. Uh, even we were recording uh, uh, the walkthrough video earlier today. We had a couple weird crashes and things. There's going to be technical issues. It's a beta. So I'm just saying that out loud uh, just so that we know. Um, let's see. Uh, and to be fair, Jason and team and Lightburn, they're pretty damn quick on fixing things. They're fast. They're very diligent. They're, yeah. They're, like, they're like, it's like plaid fast like fast fast yeah we we report something and it's like oh um download the new version and we're like wow okay Vic like, it Leon. takes, it takes us longer to download the new thing than to them to fix it it's like what yeah. okay let I me mean, download the new one so vic, vic leon is wondering if uh it will have light burn camera functionality um oh alex campbell was messing yeah. around with that a little bit and kind of got it to work it worked it looked like yeah so yeah. Um, I would expect Lightburn would, uh, you know, likely have that figured out. Uh, Keith is asking, will the same license support Gerbil, DSP, and Galvo? Unlikely. Uh, the answer to that is unlikely right now. It doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. Uh, it's been an immense amount of work for them to get this to work at all. Yeah. Uh, and they're, they're, I mean, they've worked like 80 hour days <laughs> through the holiday season to, to get this just functioning. So um, it, there will yep. likely be another license that you'll need to buy for it, but I'm not sure what the pricing structure is going to be. I don't think they are either, uh, but we will update you on that. Of course, when we get news on that, uh, let's see. Uh, Kristen says, sorry, I don't understand fully. So will easy CAD two board with Lightburn should be better than easy CAD three. Uh, yes. That's the idea. An EasyCAD 2 board with Lightburn should offer significant in, in, uh, performance improvements over EasyCAD 3. That That is my current expectation. Um, so, you know, I would, I would definitely do that. Um, will EasyCAD 2 plus Lightburn uh, lack something that's possible with EasyCAD 3? We touched on this a little earlier in the stream, but 3D functionality, uh, nowhere to be seen. Uh, it's, it's not something that, that Lightburn is, is framed out for right now. So if you use your EasyCAD 3 installation for 3D functionality, uh, you're probably not going to be on Light, Lightburn anytime soon. Um, that's just the, the reality of the situation. Uh, Alex Campbell says so, it works uh, as far as the, the Lightburn camera goes. Someone wants a link to the EasyCAD 2 board that you um, I will, bought. I will get that uh, after the stream. I will go ahead and link it in the description. So after the stream is over, just come back, refresh the page, and I'll drop the link right down in the description. You got to be careful who you buy them from because there are clones out there all the time. And even though the clone boards work with Lightburn, you should probably still not want to get a clone. So I'll add the link down in the description for you guys uh, really soon. Um uh, you do not get 2.5 or 3D with Lightburn yet. No, uh, right now we're just basic functionality, uh, but that's stuff they're working on. Like I said, there's a huge, I've made a huge list in their support forums of like things that we need to add. So yeah, the, the 2.5D stuff um, shouldn't be that hard to implement, but you know, that's not, it's not, we're not even looking at that right now. We're just trying to get the, the thing to work, <laughs> to function correctly. Um would it will be light possible? Burn files... Go ahead, Tom. Uh, nope. Uh, will Lightburn files uh, from Gantry open on Galvo? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's test it right now. It's about time that we've done something, right? Uh, so I have two uh, instances of Lightburn open over here. So we can switch over to our Ruida and we can import uh, a project from a customer. Here it is. Uh, we can just change a couple things really quick. Let's maybe... Uh, you know, set this to like blue and then we'll save this. So we'll go file, save as, and uh, we'll just save that as whatever in our downloads folder. And then here we are in Lightburn for Galvo. We can get rid of our little header image here. And uh, let's go to open and see if this opens up. And there it Where's is. Uh, it does open upside down and 
backwards, but it opens. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, absolutely. Um, it seems like you can import that, uh, no problem. Um, that, that does seem to work. Uh, Ben Sickle says easy CAD three board for sale. <laughs> that's, that's really Dude, funny. Rest in peace, man. Yeah, that's really funny. Um, yeah, well, we, uh, you know what's funny? I just like there's to... There's going to be... What's up? Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. Just, uh, what we, I'm saying we, is there's, there's going to be a, uh a shortage of easy cat two boards. Sorry. I think we're on a delay. So we're like not. stepping no, on each other. I hope not, dude. It's all good. I just wanted to uh, mention that we're smashing our live stream record with 88 people watching live right now. Good. Uh, so what's up everybody. If this is your first time over at laser, everything subscribe, uh, because we've got a lot of really great stuff coming your way. Uh, can I run multiple Blink. Galvos at the same time? I don't know. And it's killing me. Uh, I'm just waiting for Jason to add <laughs> CO2 Galvo support. Once that uh, laser source is supported, I'll be able to run the fiber in one instance and the Galvo in another to see if they'll both run at the same time. Uh, but I'm not sure yet, so uh, I don't have the answer to that question yet. If you haven't already smashed the like button, guys, go smash it right now. Let's get this in front of as many people as possible. Yep. Um, so and light burns in the house, by the way. So ask. this is yeah. your time. Ask away. I'm telling you, just Jason's, uh, bombard him. Jason's answering questions in chat right so, now. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yep. Um, so I'm just going to, uh, go ahead. We'll hit P here. P is center instead of uh, C on easy CAD. And, um, I do want to just show you guys if you're LMA members and you know, the laser master Academy library for fiber lasers, I have ported it over to light burn. So here it is. All of the different materials you're used to working with all of the different settings that you are used to seeing are all here. We've got all of our settings. We can go ahead and assign it to layers just like we would with a gantry laser. Here's our hatch menu. Let's take a look at the hatch menu for a second, guys. Um, there is some familiar stuff going on in here. We have our speed, our power, and our frequency. Uh, fill modes, just like you're used to seeing in regular light burns, so we can mark things as a line, or a fill, or a fill in line, or the offset fill, it's all here. Um, we have our bi-directional fill, uh, or our unidirectional fill, so we can swap between those. There are a couple hatch patterns missing, but it's been confirmed multiple times now. They're working on adding uh, those hatch patterns that we are used to seeing with our Galvo lasers on EasyCAD. Uh, we should have a full suite of them. We'll, we'll see. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting good things there. Uh, they're not quite here yet, but we do have bi-directional and, uh, and unidirectional, as well as cross-hatching. Uh, cross-hatching is here as well. Uh, we have our line interval. That's our 0 0.025 uh, line spacing, right? It also uh, does a quick conversion to lines per inch. If you prefer to use lines per inch, it's about a thousand. Uh, it's kind of like our standard. That's our laser everything standard. You guys are used to seeing that here on the channel. I think channel. they can't see. I think they need to. Oh, some yeah. people can't see the yeah, entire gotcha, window. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. That's a bummer. Um, let me fix that really quick. Hmm. Um, hold on, guys. Just give me one second. This should fix that for you. There you go. Sorry about that. Um, so, again, speed, power, frequency right up there at the top for you. Uh, the modes that we talked about just a moment ago. Um, we've got the bi-directional fill and the crosshatch right here. So just like you're used to seeing in EasyCAD. Uh, we also got our line interval. We just covered the 0 0.025 laser everything standard, right? We're used to seeing that. Uh, your scan angle, right? Works exactly the way it does in EasyCAD. So scan angle, zero degrees. We can set that to our opposing 45s with the crosshatch option. Um, you've got your passes per, uh, per pen there. Um, flood fill kind of does what snake fill does where it like jumps around to just fill things as it's moving through kind of like the the vector um but it doesn't connect the ends so you get slightly different results based on on my testing so it, it's struggling with things like pmags right now uh but like i said they're working on hatch settings so hopefully we should see uh a a reworked hatch menu uh in this back end soon um so there it is uh if you want to override your default timings they're up in here right in this menu right here uh, so you've got all your min-max jump delay, all of your laser on, off, end times uh, are all up here. And they're very easy to override per setting if you need to do that. Um, 
we'll also just take a look at uh, some of the machine settings real quick. Uh, so if we come up here into our device settings for our uh, fiber laser source, lots of familiar stuff here. Uh, we've got our field size, so 110 by 110. We're on our 110 lens right now. Uh, we've got our uh, frame speed for when we're framing. We have our lens correction area down here. Um, lens corrections like core files are not currently supported so you can't import a core file and there's no native way to perform lens corrections outside of doing them manually uh, within Lightburn. Hopefully that's something they're changing. I've left quite a bit of feedback with Jason about that. He's probably sick of hearing me talk about it, uh, but that's something I'm hoping for where it would run like the core file.exe, but Lightburn's version of it, in-house solution uh, that just applies the lens corrections for you. Uh, so you don't have to deal with that. But right now, no importing of core files, no uh, correction software. It's just the good old fashioned uh, manual adjustments for things like your bulge, skew and trapezoid. Uh, we've got, so one of the big things you'll notice in our hatch menu, when we were looking at our hatch menu, uh, the timings were grayed out and hidden. And that's because in Lightburn, they actually make your jump settings and your timing settings down here at the bottom default globally. So if you have a setting that you use as your baseline, uh, in EasyCAD, you have to go through each individual setting and set them manually for every single one. And if you miss one, you could mess stuff up. Lightburn, you set it one time in the global menu and it applies to all of your parameters and then you can override them individually if you choose to. Uh, so that is- Thank uh, you, sweet baby Jesus. I, that's, it's a big thing. Man. Uh, right now, you message know what? here. What, what's up? The issue that I was having is I forget to change things and I go press play or, uh, you know, F2 it bro. And I would just go with the default, whatever thing is and forget to change jump speed. And I'm wondering, it's like, why is my stuff messed up? Well, yeah. I forgot to change the parameters yeah. and I hated that yeah. right. so much. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Samuelson, uh, Aaron asks, uh, store and load different lens sides profiles. I just wanted to say, I see you dude. And we're going to talk about that. Um, so yeah, so, so jump, uh, jump settings, delays, all global settings. I just want to cover that, uh, laser source configuration right here. Currently only fiber laser sources are supported. Um, Oh, I hope that we get the CO2 Galvo soon. Cause I really want to test to see if we can run two instances, uh, and, and play around with some of that, but that does take a little, the, the source settings are a little bit different. They'll add those shortly, uh, fiber type. JPT, RACUS, IPG, all of those settings you're used to seeing right in here, including your minimum and maximum frequency. And uh, last but not least, we have some port settings here. This is still being fleshed out, but here are your ports. Uh, and up here are red dot offset uh, and scale and return position. Uh, if you need to edit those, those options are available to you right here. So um, this is kind of the main menu, guys. This is this is the stuff that you're used to seeing, that you're used to working with in your F3 params. Um, and and so far, it's, it's all working like really, really great. Um, we have some cool stuff to talk about as far as framing and lighting goes. But before we get to that, I did just want to um, answer that question uh, about the lens profile. So how is Lightburn going to handle lens profiles? Well, uh, it's a good answer. Uh, it's very, very easy. So um, if I just drop this down here, you can see my Ruida down here in the corner. Uh, we've got the two diode lasers and then you'll notice I have my JCZ fiber and my JCZ Viber 150. Uh, it's just a different device profile. That's all there is to it. Uh, when you switch between devices or lenses, your library will follow you. Your machine settings will follow you. So if you have different settings like field size uh, or different parameters like aluminum general, and it's different for your 150 and your 110, those things will follow the lenses as you swap between them. They're very easy to set up. If we come into our devices menu here, uh, I could just click find my laser. So I would just pop like my 210 in, right? And we would hit find my laser, hit next. Uh, and it's going to find the fiber laser in this list. I'm already using it, so it's not going to pop up here. Uh, we should be able to just actually um, uh, don't even have to do it that way. We should be able to just duplicate these. I don't know how I did it earlier. Uh, I did it did it earlier today. We can probably just build it manually. So there's the JCZ fiber. 
Uh, import EasyCAD config. So you should be able to import everything just right out of your EasyCAD setup, like the stuff on your F3 parameter pages. I've had some issues with testing that. I don't think it's quite ironed out yet, but it's there. Uh, so that's something they're working on. You connect via USB. And then we would just name this like JCZ Fiber uh, 220, right? And uh, we would just set this to 220 to 220 for our field size and hit next. And, uh, and we're done. And then you will have a 220 lens and you can pop in and out of them however you'd like. Uh, it, it works very well. Um, and it will it will auto update. Yes. So as you switch between lenses, you will all of your settings, you'll still have to do the initial setup for each lens once. But once it's done, jumping between the different devices will change the device settings and your library out for you uh, between those lens changes, which is uh, really, really going to make a, a big difference as far as just like lens management and things like that, uh, that that should that should really, really help out with that. So um, right now we're just gonna stick with our, our 110 because that's the lens that I have uh, in the machine right now. So um, here we are in this uh, menu. Oh, and I also just wanted to mention if like, let's say I'm running a job on the fiber and I want to also run a job on my CO2, all you need to do is simply just launch another instance of Lightburn. Uh, and another instance of Lightburn will open and I can come in here and continue editing files, or working on projects, send jobs to the CO2. That all works uh, perfectly well. I've, I've tested it myself multiple times and uh, I can't seem to get it to break. So um, that does seem to be working right now, which is excellent. So you can use your fiber and your CO2 on the same computer at the same time while running jobs on both machines. Uh, beautiful. Excellent stuff. Um, the only thing I haven't tested, again, is just running two different Galva machines at the same time uh, because we need that CO2 Galva support in order for me to do that. The UV is on EZ3, so that's that's out right now. But the CO2 Galva, we will be able to test that out uh, as soon as it's, uh, you know, supported, as soon as we get support for that. So, um, you know, let's let's mark something. I, I feel like we should mark something. Um, will it work with Lightburn Bridge? Uh, that is a question for Jason. I don't see why not. It's not, mm, I don't know. No, probably not actually. Now that I'm thinking about it. Cause isn't the Lightburn bridge over ethernet guys. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, CAD doesn't work over ethernet. So probably not actually. Um, just judging by the hardware limitations. Yep. Jason says no. Uh, so it will not. Uh, so, you know, bummer, but, uh, so be it. It's always Chrome remote desktop. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got, um, we've got a little text here. We have some changes over here to, to like kind of our, our laser control menu. And I just want to chat about these, uh, really quick. First of all, we've got this cut selected graphics down here. This works the same on Gantry as it does on, um, on Galvo, but you guys, uh, you Galvo guys, you easy CAD guys know this as mark selected that's all this is right here so if we just go ahead and turn that on uh, it's only going to mark the stuff that we have selected uh, if we turn that off it'll mark anything in the workspace uh, that the output is set to on for up here in our pen list um, we also have some new framing options so if we go ahead and hit frame let me just see where this is landing on the bed so i'm gonna actually just for this part of the demo we're gonna blow our, uh, our our webcam size up a little bit there. And let me get a card under it. So we've all, we've all been here, guys. We've got just like a, a total mess of text. Uh, and it is impossible to read uh, because there's just so much going on. Um, with the frame there, uh, it, it, you can't you can't see that at all. Uh, if we go to the bounding box, yes, we have our normal square. We could use that to just line up, but there are there are better ways now, uh, which is which is really cool. So uh, with the bounds, if we wanted to, we could check this box right here. It says frame individually. So if we go ahead and frame those individually, you'll see we go from contours on each of the letters to little boxes around each of the letters. Interesting, maybe not for this use, but interesting. Um, we also have the hull method. So uh, the hull method is kind of like bounds, except it's cutting the corners. So if you have like empty space, you're going to get a uh, more um, shaped image. So here in this hull 
uh, frame that we're looking at, we can see that the text at the bottom of our message here, right, uh, takes up less space than the text at the top. And we're seeing that kind of like hugged frame, uh, you know, so we, we're having a better idea of where the text is actually going to fall on the piece. So if we were working on like a triangle shaped piece of aluminum and we need to make sure that our text fit that, you know, diamond, uh, it would it would tuck right in. We'd have the whole outline. We'd be good to go. Uh, last but not least, we have one the, the best what's up? options there. The hull. It's yeah. just one. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's going to make the way organic stuff so much yeah. simpler. Easy. It's, it's it just, definitely is going to make game yeah, yeah, will 100% help with organic stuff. Not so useful. It can be tricky if you uh, are trying to straighten things. I probably wouldn't go with the whole option. Like if you had a straight yeah. edge and you were trying to straighten along a straight edge, it'd probably be the only time I wouldn't want to use this. But otherwise, uh, Im immensely helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. immensely I think helpful. The best, the best way to, to um, put it was what Jason told me. He said, just imagine putting a rubber band around what you want. It's like a rubber band. Right. That's, that's a great literally explanation. What you that's a great explanation. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Taking a bit of text and vacuum packed it and it's just covered it. Yep. Right. Isn't it? It's neat. I would definitely use that. Yeah. And yeah. then while we don't want to use. Say that we've just hit 110 people watching. Woo. So that's a first for. Yeah. Nice. New, new record. New record. Yeah. Uh, don't forget to smash the like button if you're one of those 110. And, um, you know, we don't want to use, and this is a very poor example, so I'll try to show you guys on something else uh, later down the road. But uh, we don't want to use contour for text, obviously, but we do have one more option in here, outside shapes only. So if we check that, uh, there's going to be less being lit up. It can increase your light speed, uh, but it works better for graphics than text. Basically, if you have an O, instead of showing you the outer diameter, curve of the O and the inner diameter curve of the O it will only show you the outer diameter. Again, not a stellar example here on the screen. Um, I bet I could probably get this just a little bit larger for you guys too, because there's a lot going on here. Let me just see if I can make a quick edit uh, so that we can actually increase the size of this just a little bit. Um, so this isn't a great example of that, but it is very cool feature, this outside shapes only. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, but before we mark this, let's just switch back to our normal bounding box so that I can make sure that we're just on the card. And I will show you guys, we will mark something. We're gonna to mark together right now. So here we go, we've got our piece lined up. Uh, we've framed it and we can either start from this menu right here or we can start from our outer menu. Uh, you guys may remember continue mode from EasyCAD. Continue mode, if uh, checked, means that after the job is done running, it will automatically light the next part. If that's something that you use often, if you're doing like big bulk runs or something, all you need to do to use that here is just start the job from inside the frame menu. When the job completes, it will automatically go right back to lighting so you can line up your next part and mark again. Um, if you don't care about that, you can just launch from the main menu, which we don't really particularly care about that right now. We're not doing 100 of these. So we can go ahead and hit the start button and uh, enjoy the first light burn, Galvo burn of the channel. Here we go, three, two, one, mark. And uh, there we go, we're, we're cruising. Uh, Geo has done a ton of testing and the line distance and pulse distance uh, for frequencies and power changes all convert very, very nicely over to light burn. There's, there's virtually no difference. So uh, everything that you expect to work one way on EasyCAD, it's going to work exactly the same way over here in light burn. So um, that's just, that's just, uh, I mean, that's the story, guys. It works. Uh, everything works uh, here. Obviously, there are some missing features, right? There's, there are some big things that, that aren't here yet that they're working on, that they're going to add, but it functions. Uh, everything functions. The, the important stuff works really well. Uh, you know, the, the Galvo tracking, it all works fine. Uh, frequency adjustments, all of your parameter settings all work fine. Um, it's, it's, just, it's just working, guys, and it works really, really well. Hey, it's still a beta, so some stuff is not going to work, yeah. you know, as it's meant to be. But overall, it's doing amazing. You know, you, you can't complain at all at what we're seeing here. It's just uh, amazing. 
Stuart's asking, um, so for example, I work in jewelry manufacturing and tools. Right now I need to engrave and then add a different shape to cut it out uh, after. Could all info be done at once? For example, like dog tag pendants. Uh, yeah, that's that's very easy. Uh, very easy to do in Lightburn. Uh, we would do it the same exact way we would do it on a gantry machine. There it is. Uh, our first burn of the channel with light burn there. Uh, so let's say we wanted to cut this out while we were uh, while we were marking this here. We could just go in and uh, draw a box, right? And uh, we just want to make sure that we use a pen that we have set to line. So there's line right there. And it'll go ahead and it will engrave. And then it's going to cut this piece out. Uh, obviously, we need to add our cut settings in here. So we can come into our library, come down to aluminum, cut. And we can assign to that layer right there. And then we'll obviously just want to assign, you know, a certain number of passes to this. Um, maybe like 60 passes or something. Oh. oh, there's a thing. Jason, I'm looking at you, man. I can't set my laser to 60 passes. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to have him look at Try that. Um, How far does it go above nine? Uh, well, yeah, I guess so. I can I can use the arrow keys to go up, but I can't type more than six which is bizarre uh but yeah so you just set your cut passes right there and then it's gonna go ahead and mark this uh this this text here for us and then it will proceed to cut so um if we wanted to we could just set this to something like super duper fast so that we're not here all day like five thousand uh just to show we can go ahead and turn that cross hatch off too uh just just to illustrate here and so we'll come into laser and we'll hit start and it's going to run through all this text again. And then when it's done, you'll see it'll start running the, the cut passes. Uh, no problem oh, at all. Switch the output off to the text and just have it do the cut. That's true. I, I could yeah. do that too. Yeah, well, it's just options, isn't it? You yep, might want to do it. options. The yeah, that's yeah. the beautiful thing about Lightburn um, is, that, is that you do have those options uh, at your disposal. Uh, if you guys don't know, up here in the top right corner, the output and show tabs uh, are very nice so um, you can hide something from being visible but still have it mark I don't know why you'd want to do that but you could uh, or you could hide something from marking but still be able to see it like an outline uh, which is really really nice as well if you're trying to like plan out jobs and things like that you could see our, our little cut test there was successful obviously we didn't cut all the way through the aluminum uh, but that works that brings me to another uh, item one of the big things that's missing right now from Lightburn is wobble. Uh, we don't have any wobble settings uh, for cutting, which is, uh, you know, for, for you guys who are big on cutting, especially the jewelers and stuff, uh, you're very familiar with wobble. Uh, and you know that it's a vital part of cutting out shapes from metals specifically uh, when, when, when you're trying to do that with a Galvo. Uh, no wobble here yet. So if we come into our line features, uh, we've got speed, we've got power. Uh, we've got frequency. There's just no section for wobble yet. So um, hopefully that's something that we'll see in the near future. But uh, right now we don't have it. So that's one of the things that uh, that is currently missing. Uh, again, I, I can't imagine that it would be that hard to implement. Not that I know what I'm, not, I'm talking about. I'm not a software developer. But, um, you know. You uh, do always have the option of just offsetting your outline, say one millimeter, filling a hatch, and then it's effectively doing the same as what a wobble is doing. Yeah, I think I think it I think it's slower. I think I think doing a, an offset hatch is that is slower than a, a wobble, just runtime wise. But it's a good workaround. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You could you could certainly do like an offset. Jason. Jason has just updated in chat that the pass count has been updated to one hundred. Okay. So, uh, yeah. For the next build. For the next build. And wobble is planned. Maybe, maybe a thousand. <laughs> I think a thousand would be a good cap. I've run, I've run six hundred pass jobs, like no, no sweat for sure. So, um, well, I'll, I'll make another post about that later. Um, but if you're listening, Jason, <laughs> I need more, I need more than a hundred. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so, so that's, uh, that quick layering question. I just wanted to answer that really quick. Um, raster images, uh, are also, uh, no problem here. Okay. Jason said he'll bump to a thousand. Thank you, man. <laughs> uh, so if we wanted to just like mark, uh, an image really quick, I don't know. Um, we did this cutting board last time. It didn't come out very well, but, um, we can try to do this again. So here's just a picture I took for a customer. 
uh, that was a proof uh, that we did. So we'll just resize this here and get it onto the board. That's a gigantic image. Um, so there's a lot of cool stuff in Lightburn, guys, that we don't have in EasyCAD that you kind of get out of the gate. These aren't new features, but they are new to us as uh as, as Galvo users. And before we could use some of these features and then export files and try to bring them into EasyCAD, now we can just do it all in Lightburn uh, in one shot. One of those is uh, image editing uh, for raster images. So if we come in here and we adjust the image, right? Uh, we can see this is doing like a halftone pattern for us right now. We get all of these different halftone modes. So we've got uh, uh, sketch, halftone, newsprint, right? And as we sift through these, it's gonna change how these dots are rendered in here, right? Stucky, Atkinson, uh, it's all in here. So if you're used to using any of these kind of like image editing features, uh, they're all built into Lightburn. So uh, that means that you will get them for your Galvo laser just like right out of the box, uh, which is very, very cool. Um, if I wanted to really take advantage of this, uh, we could do something like, um, you know, the Jarvis, we'll go ahead and just turn see if we can get like a decent image out of this uh we'll turn that brightness up let's turn that contrast up a little bit it's probably a bit much uh we're not going to spend too much time on this but i do just want to show you guys that it works um we'll go ahead and hit okay um we'll probably do this on an aluminum business card so last but not least uh i'd likely want to just uh invert that uh for the business card and this should give us a decent result um i just kind of ham fist in this guy so um you know, bear with me, but uh, if we take a look here, we've got a card. Let me go swap the card out and we'll try it right We got a, uh, we got a question here from, I believe it's Stuart, and he was asking, would it be possible to adjust the power depending on the color of black and gray? So black goes deeper. I think he means power map. Yeah, like a power map or power pixel adjustment. Uh, I don't believe. Yeah. Well, yes. I don't uh, think it's in there I, right now. I don't now. know. I don't know how it, I'm, so... Don't quote me, because uh, I'm not this an expert on this yet. This is what we talking about earlier, was it? But, um, oops, sorry. Uh, but, yeah, we were talking about this earlier. So if we come into image mode here, uh, right now we are using kind of like a halftone pattern, right? It's a series of dots, and all the dots are either black or white. Uh, there's no gray. If we drop our image mode to grayscale, uh, we'll see that we get a maximum power and a minimum power based on the level of gray that we're at. I haven't tested this too much, so I'm not sure how it's gonna work. Uh, if you want, we can run it right now and we can try it. I'm a big fan of halftone patterns and like, you know, re-rendering images, um, but this could work very well as well. Um, I'm not really sure. The thing with aluminum, we're working on an aluminum business card right now, is that you don't really get varying colors. Uh, it's white or it's not, <laughs> you know? So I think for this specific instance, doing one of these patterns would probably be the better option. Um, but that said, uh, working on some different materials, there's definitely room uh, and you do have a max power and a min power here to spread out over that 255 range of gray values. Uh, so we should be able to, uh, you know, experiment with that. And of course we'll do tutorials and, and deep dives on all of these different features as we go forward. Um, Grayscale. Okay. Great. Yep. I see that. So Jason says grayscale yeah. mode is not currently supported, but planned. So I wonder what would happen if I did it. Probably <laughs> nothing. I, I don't know. I don't want to find out. Um, so let's just go ahead and run this on Jarvis and, uh, and see what it does. It should be fine. Uh, and I keep trying to click. <laughs> I'm trying to use Lightburn on discord <laughs> instead of over here where it actually is. So we'll go ahead and run this now. And uh, you guys can see us run a raster image right here. Uh, so we can try that out. Um, thank you so much for the uh, the ten dollar super chat there, David. Uh, David wants me to order a pizza. I may just have to do that after the stream. Um, but thank you uh, seriously. Uh, I appreciate that big time. Uh, makes a big difference there. If you guys haven't already smashed the like button, please go smash the like button right away. I smell anodizing and it's gross. So I need to turn on my exhaust. And uh, let's see, uh, which fiber sources are supported? Um, any fiber source should be supported. Uh, it should not be a matter of source. Um, source type, maybe, like class, like Galvo, UV, CO2. Only fiber is supported right now. Uh, but as far as the specific 
source, it should not matter. Uh, JPT, Rakus, Max should all work. Uh, they're all controlled by the same EasyCAD control card. Uh, so they should work across the board. I, don't, I, I can't imagine why, why it wouldn't. Um, uh, yeah, I'd love to get 100 likes today, Matt. That would be awesome. Um, 100 likes while still actively live. Also, we're at 120 viewers. I think we peaked over that just a little bit uh, a little earlier on, but uh, 120 viewers is amazing. That's way past our old record for a live stream. So uh, thanks for hanging out with me uh, today, guys, because it's, it's, uh, it's really a lot of fun. I'm, I'm having a good time uh, exploring some of these features. I'm not sure how this is going to come out. I think I think my uh, my cells are too close together. I think I'm pushing the the um, uh, the resolution just a little too hard on this image, maybe. But I'm gonna let it run for a minute, just to see. Uh, will this work offline, not connected to the laser? Yes, yes. Lightburn always works offline uh, when not connected to machines. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, no more having to carry around your 50 watt fiber laser in a backpack in order to edit your marking files on the go. Uh, you can open Lightburn at any time for any reason to do just about anything except mark uh, if if you're not connected to a laser. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Joseph, uh, what's up? Um, it should be a model Lightburn anytime, anywhere. <laughs> anytime, anywhere. <laughs> Uh, I did negate, yes. So when you negate, so I can show you that right now, probably. <laughs> I don't, Jason's um, saying the DPI is also probably too high as well. Yeah, you might want I, I to figured. Not, I figured it's it's probably just a touch high here on the because I'm used to using the line interval, you know, 0 0.025. But um, yeah, we did invert. So once you uh, change your raster image, it's not necessarily displayed out here. I believe there's an option to show the changed image here instead of the original. I don't know where it is off the top of my head, uh, but it's in there somewhere. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Yep, you can use it offline, no problem at all. Um, Joseph's asking, when can we get this? We don't know. Uh, they're still working on it. They're still building out uh, its feature set for launch. Uh, and there is no current timetable for release other than 2022. Uh, outside of that, we we do not know when it is coming, um, so we're just gonna have to we're just gonna have to keep an eye right now. Um, uh, for a CO2 Galvo, uh, is just an EasyCAD 2 control card required? Anything else needed for light burn compatibility? Uh, they're still ironing out some stuff with drivers, but uh, that said, um, you shouldn't need anything else. EasyCAD. Uh, the EasyCAD control card should just be controlled by Lightburn. There are obviously different source settings uh, for the different types of lasers. Like on CO2 Galvo, you have Tickle uh, or like the first pulse killer. Uh, and you don't have those things on fiber. So you'll have to set those things still. But it's, in terms of like software or hardware, there's nothing else you should need. Uh, CO2 Galvo and UV should both work with Lightburn once they're supported. Uh, we just have to wait for support. So... Um, it shouldn't, it shouldn't make a difference. Uh, it looks like Jason is confirming that in the chat. Uh, thank you, Jason, for doing that for me. And, uh, let's see, can it burn through copper, aluminum, or brass foil? Sure, why not? Uh, it can do everything your fiber laser can do right now, uh, with EasyCAD, uh, just with Lightburn, uh, which is awesome, material-wise, uh, obviously. Five more likes to 100. Five more likes to 100. That's awesome. Uh, I love. I love to hear it. it just to be clear, it, Lightburn doesn't change. It, like it's you're just using the software. It, it's really not going to make your laser run any different. It, like I said, I mentioned this before. Geo is the guy that goes in and checks stuff like that, and it literally fires just like EasyCAD. It, there's. Yep. It's still the same. I, so you're still using the same controller. Your controller isn't changing. Yeah. It's just the software you're yep. using to interact with the controller is changing. Uh, yep. So things like the UI, right, or like uh, being able to access different features of that controller card, that's what Lightburn's doing. The controller card, at the end of the day, is still telling the laser what to do. Uh, just Lightburn is telling the control card what to tell the laser to do now instead of the EasyCAD software. Will Lightburn be able support. to use a foot pedal? I don't. I think I saw an option for that in the device settings yet for a foot pedal uh, port. 
but um, it sh it should that should be a simple thing. Um, I I would expect that to come. Uh, BD Laser Studio asks, will rotary work? I don't know. I kind of want to test it. We should do that after this photo. I see some details in the photo here, but it doesn't look like it's coming out very well. I I probably didn't do a good job preparing the image. We kind of did it really quick. <laughs> I think maybe try taking your DPI right down. Yeah. No kidding. I mean, it's there. I can, uh, I can see it for sure. Jason said rotary does work, so. <clears throat> I want to know how it'll work. I am currently experimenting with that. What and I'm building a PC work? just for light burn. For right now, as we speak. How is it handling split, Patrick? Uh, he said, how's it handling split? Patrick? Uh, so far, so good. As soon as I get my steps for rotation dialed in. Light burn said, Alex, use half tone instead. Set sales per inch 100 to 150. All right. With DPI you're using. Uh, half tone instead. You And what was after that? Uh, he One, said 150 else per inch to 100 to 150. 150. So okay. 125. Great. Done. Let's try that. Maybe we can adjust our settings here too. We should not be running at 500 speed. We should be at like a thousand speed, maybe even 2000 speed. Uh, max power, probably somewhere around... 50% should do the trick and we can get a little more pulse power out of this laser too by upping our frequency to 37. Let's go ahead and give that a try uh, and see what that does instead. Oh, so much faster. Patrick, Patrick, are you using Chuck or Roller? Chuck. Cool. We'll, we'll jump into that as soon as I get a nice picture. We'll, uh, we'll catch up with you guys over there and start, uh, jumping into the rotary. The rotary should be fine. Uh, uh, Jason certainly seems to seems to think so. This is way faster. I don't know, might need to bump power down. I don't know. I'm not gonna spend all day on it. I mean, this this is like a whole video topic, guys. Like using doing raster images and like editing them. It took a while for me to get the. Uh, if you remember the ultrasound business card photo yeah. episode on the channel. Uh, in that episode, we use Lightburn to prepare a bitmap for EasyCAD. Uh, so we went we went through all of this. Uh, there's a lot to it. That actually that's looking pretty good right there, uh, from what I can see, which is nice. Uh, 134 people watching this stream. If you haven't already smashed the like button as hard as humanly possible, uh, please do so now, uh, so we can reach more people and uh, get this information about Lightburn out uh, because I, I really want as many people to know uh, about this upcoming software as, as humanly possible. Um, it's, it's really important to me that we kind of spread the word about this because this is going to change the way that we run our businesses. This is going to change the way we play with our lasers. Uh, this is going to change the way we interact with each other. This is going to change the way that we talk about these machines. Uh, this, this really is kind of like a, a monolith uh, of, of, you know, monolithic piece of news that we've received. Um, so I, I really want to, uh, be able to, to share this with people. Uh, we do at, not at have... this rate. I want my phone to run light burn. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, the laser community is going to kill it in 2022. Uh, for sure. Uh, lots to, uh, lots to make, uh, the, the, you know, con lots of content to make on the channel. Uh, David Kowalski just joined our little $1 special icon here for the YouTube memberships. Thank you, David. That's always fun. And uh, uh, Brent Roach is asking for a ballpark timeline. We don't know. Uh, ballpark timeline 2022. Uh, so we'll, we'll just have to hold on to our butts and wait um, and, you know, hope uh, that, that we see it soon-ish. Uh, okay, it, look. Image. So it's there. It's cool. While you walk over there, but think about it. Everyone has listened. Like, Jason probably did a few changes while we were live. Like, literally, I I'm positive yeah. that he made oh, yeah. these changes. No, or he's absolutely prior. in there right now, yeah. like, while he's watching the stream. Like, yeah, he he's it. literally just coding as we speak, probably. So, be hope, be like, 
So the, the, the laser bed cold. isn't actually well lit, but um, actually, I, you know what? I think I can just click this while we're live. Yes, yes, perfect. And um, I can zoom in here and show you guys. Uh, that actually looks pretty good. That's much better. Um, and of course it needs, you know, fine tuning, but uh, it's there for sure. So uh, I'm gonna call that a success and uh, we can come back to that later. But yeah, one more time there for you. There you you go. set it to 150, even if you set it to 120. That just needs a little bit of tuning and you're yep. there. Yeah. Yep, just a little bit of tuning. It's it's very, very close. And it looks much better in person than it does on camera. So um, boom, raster images done. We did some vector-based text. Uh, I think it's time to get stupid with the rotary tool. Um, what I'm going to do is probably remove this here, and we'll just go ahead and bring in... Uh, the laser everything logo is what I really like to, to play with for rotary stuff. So let's go ahead and give that a try. I'm just going to have to dive into my Google Drive here. And uh, we should find, let's see, pictures, logo, laser everything. Boom. There it is. I love how I don't have the sweaty, anxious concern about importing graphics that I have when... <laughs> When I'm when I'm working with EasyCAD, <laughs> um, guys, we don't have to save as AIA anymore. Man, I am stoked about that. Sixty, like a hundred percent. Millimeters is usually good for a test. Uh, we'll go ahead and just rotate that, and we can do a fill. And we'll just I don't know. Do it. We're not gonna get like super crazy with like defocusing and doing like a super good. I'm just looking for functionality here. Uh, so we'll probably just do like aluminum general just to show that it's, it's marking on the cup well uh, rather than doing Maybe. the full setup for powder coat removal because that's a big pain in the ass and I don't really want to waste time on stream doing that. So we'll just do like an anodized aluminum. Uh, yeah. Maybe open up your hatch a bit, Alex, just for time. Uh, yep, smart, true. Uh, we could definitely do that. Maybe 0 0.05. And... Mm -hmm. um, so we'll come to tools, rotary setup, and uh, for once in my life, I'm clicking Chuck in this menu. Uh, we'll enable the rotary, and I'm not sure if it needs to be reversed or yet not, uh, because I, I, I haven't used it yet. This is the first time. <laughs> Laser everything exclusive. Uh, we're, we're figuring it out together. Uh, split size, 0.05-ish is usually good for me. My steps per rev is uh, 12,800. And then we just need something to turn. Um, so let's pop over to the uh, the the Galvo cam here and, and just kind of do our rotary setup really quick. So I'm gonna actually just kind of blip. I'm just gonna full screen that for you guys there. And, just to uh, also say while you're there, Alex, Jason's been adding some pictures he's been doing on the Discord in Lightburn for Galvo, and they look amazing. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, they do. So if you're not, if you're not part yeah. of the Discord, go check it out. Yeah, you need to check the these out. The thing are. that you have to remember is that every incredible diode photo, every incredible CO2 photo that we've ever seen has been prepared on Lightburn. So, I mean, yep. you know, we're just bringing that, that functionality to us over here. I just wanted to bring this up a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. Got axes over here and stuff. There's all kinds of stuff going on. But I should be able to just put a link in the chat to Jason's video channel. So Thank people want to join up the Discord. So who would be the first to get a light burn tattoo? Shit. Me. Might be me. I'll do it. <laughs> Might be me. Yeah, I don't care, dude. I would do that in a heartbeat. Seriously. I'm not going to mount this to the table. I'm not doing any alignment. Uh, this is purely just kind of like a, a run and gun. Because, uh, again, I don't want to take all that time on the stream. It's all right. Very check. I gotta build this PC. I'm over here. This is cool. 
Um, yeah, I gotta get looking at installing Lightburn on my Mac M1 now. So yeah, that's I. I want. I really want to try Lightburn on Linux. Just just to try. Mm -hmm. So with the M1, Jason was saying it works with Rosetta. So just go. Oh, interesting. We're gonna get a really quick uh, diameter on this cheapo mug. About eighty-seven point three ish. Again, we're kind of we're kind of run and gunning here, guys. Uh, but circumference eighty-seven. Point three. No, I'm an idiot. Up here, eighty-seven point three. There we go. That looks better. Um, what is this? Min speed, max speed. That looks fine. Acceleration, return, rotary axis. Uh, we are rotating along the Y. Don't want to forget that. Um, I'm not sure what overlap. Dude, what's overlap? Do do we know what that does yet? Do not. I don't. Um, know, I don't know what that does either, and it has a setting by default. Well, Tony was speaking about. So if I think, don't quote me on this. When you see lines and steps, this might overlap it to take away them little yeah. lines. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, it, it's it's that stepping. Is that when you do a split size too big, um, it's gonna have gaps if you if the cup when it falls. So that's why you, you normally choose a smaller split size to compensate for that. Mm -hmm. So that feature will overlap those lines. Yeah, you, it'd be disguising the split lines. Yep. Okay. So uh, there's the setup, guys, just so you can see it. Uh, I'm going to just fix the camera a little bit so we can get a little bit better. Yep, there you go. Jason just said it. Uh, overlap sets an amount of split overlap between splits. There we go. Yep. And then we're just going to tighten this back up and bring you guys back over to uh, to what we're doing here. So you'll you'll be able to see this up in the corner uh, so you can watch things rotate and, and do what they need to do. Uh, but I also want to make sure that you can see light burn. So, um, so this is like a, like a, a space comp for split. That's what you're telling me, right? Yeah. Look, um, just look at the chat. Jason just literally. If you literally... set split overlap to zero, each split will butt against the previous one. If you set it to non-zero, it adds an overlap. Okay. Well, that's fair enough. Um, I don't it's to get normally rid of use space comp, so I might set that to zero because mine works well without it. Uh, before we do that, though, I just want to grab our pen tool here. This is another thing, uh, Jason. If we could get this, uh, this kills me. The center cross line that runs straight across uh, the x-axis and the y-axis would be most appreciated. Uh, an option to be able to turn that on or off in the workspace would um, would really help. Uh, yeah, like so, a little tick. Uh, just want to throw like that a, out there. Like a tool. Yeah, um, but for now, that's fine. Uh, we will cut this. Let's go ahead and frame our line. Frame our line. Frame. Uh oh. Select it. Oh, you don't have to do. You? I forget. What's going on? Did I do something stupid? Uh, try your different axis. Oh, it's he said press T to center it. What? What did he say? It's too long, Jason. saying. It's too... Oh, if it goes outside oh, of the workspace, it won't frame? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, that sucks. Um, okay, but no worries. That's so, new. That's new. Yeah, definitely new. Uh, so, let's just make sure we're kind of more or less straight here. enough jason says it's a setting you can tell it to remove stuff that's outside the workspace i use it on doing co2 stuff i've got files that have got just say maybe 50 coasters templates all sitting off to the side yeah and i just drag in whatever one i need 
yeah. select that and then yeah that would be helpful because i do play around outside of the bounce box to kind of stage things so that's yeah mm -hmm. yeah and then if you go to frame those things that you staged you may not know why it you know you may not know why yeah. it's, it's having an issue like that looks like patrick is having some success we're about to test and see if we can find some success yep. uh of our own so here is the laser everything logo we have our tumbler set up right here on the rotary. We've done a quick straighten. Uh, it's, it's all very quick and dirty. Let's go ahead and hit start and see how this works. Well, that seems to not be rotating things, right? <laughs> what did Can I do? you see that? wrong let me see my rotary setup you got project mark hey we didn't know it <laughs> hmm. yeah that does seem to just kind of be engraving the whole thing huh enable rotary button looks like it might uh, be green yeah, it is off that's annoying i feel like i turned that on i guess not uh all right we're doing like a cross hatch and stuff now let's go ahead and stop this tools rotary setup enable can you please. jog it right now and Alex? thank you uh i'm sure i could no maybe not no i don't think so i don't think i can jog this axis but that's okay i'll just go manually turn it i didn't expect that to work uh so let's go let's just flip the cup over Uh, pulse width. I'm not sure. Maybe Jason can answer that. And uh, we will go ahead. Let's let's try it again. Um, if we frame the jog is not added yet. Jason okay, saying not that. added yet. Good to know. Uh, there's our frame. So we get like a nice 2D frame uh, on the rotary, which is nice instead of that weird start point split mark nonsense uh, from EasyCAD. Yeah. So so that's really good. I keep clicking in OBS. Uh, so that's good. Uh, that seems fine. So let's go ahead. And let's, let's give it a try. Uh, oh, okay. So when you hit start, it actually gives you this kind of like last chance to change things up here. Uh, that's good. Yeah. So yeah. we could 0.05. Oh, you know what? You know what? I don't think, I don't. Does this menu not apply at all? Just the enable rotary one? Or maybe I didn't change something in here? I don't know. I feel like things aren't sticking. 0.05. I already set this to 12,800. Uh, our object diameter, I don't even remember. Um, why? Mm -hmm. Hold on. Uh, where's my caliper? Seven. Uh, when you get to the table, can you move Quiet the access. light burn menu a little bit? Yeah. Yep. There you go. Um, so I just <clears throat> I had to reset some of this stuff for some reason. I don't know. But now that that's enabled, when I hit start, it comes up. Okay. Now it's now it's kept the things that I've used from the rotary setup menu. Uh, so that looks better. And then we can go ahead and hit start. Rotate, baby. You pull the window a bit lower so people can see it. Uh, yeah. In fact, I'm going to pause this and s stop it. Stop. Close. Uh, I think I'm doing a cross hatch. I am. So let's just, I didn't set these either. Four. Uh, scan angle zero. Um, just because that would have taken a very, very long time to run. So, okay. So, uh, let's go ahead and start this again. That all looks good. Let's hit start. And then, yes, we can adjust this window here. I hope my controller's set to 12,800. I thought it would. Uh, it looks like we're mirrored. So we'll have to fix that. Sorry, guys. Like I said, I've never used this before. Go back in and invert it. Yep. 
Yeah, that that's looking backwards. Uh, bummer, but not not terrible to fix. Uh, we can get that fixed up really quick. So let's move this out of the way. Come back into our rotary setup, and uh, we just want to reverse rotary direction here. No problem. Uh, so we'll hit that. That should be a quick fix. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to fix, will this support a machine with multiple lenses? Yes, uh, we covered that a little earlier in the live stream, but it, it absolutely will. Uh, no problem at all. What did I just say, guys? I said we needed to fix the reverse, but then there was another thing. A bit larger, Jason said. The split size a bit larger? Mm-hmm. I mean, we can. Uh, that goes against everything that I know about this software, but I, or not this software, but EasyCAD. It goes against my EasyCAD instincts, but we can try it's it. It's hard to see. Jason commands it, so uh, let's do it. Um, rotary setup. We can go to point one. It's about as big as I'd want to go, without getting overlaps. Um, so, because the overlap, the overlaps a problem. We don't want overlaps when we're trying to do something where, like you know, we're we're removing the. Uh, the coating because when we're removing like powder coat and stuff like that, it's that's where you're going to start seeing ablation from hitting it twice. So, um, sure, you don't have to, but it's just for the sake of yeah, not taking I, oh, all my controller settings. I'm just going to check my dips on my controller real quick and make sure that we're set to what I think we're set to. Pretty sure it's 12 8. You see your one, Patrick. Have you got the? Can you make? Can you make it out? I just did a line without a fill on this version. No, I can't really see it. It's a bit dark. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I checked because it's 25.6. So we have to fix that yeah. as well. So tools, rotary setup, and then let's get this to 25.600. Okay, there we go. All right, we should be ready now. We're golden. Third time's a charm, guys. Here we go. Let's check it out. <laughs> Keep doing it. Keep clicking the Discord call. Uh, can you do know. the lens corrections like corefile.exe? Not yet. Uh, hopefully we will have a native Lightburn solution for that where we can do our lens corrections inside Lightburn without having to use corefile. Uh, but we'll have to see. Listen to Matt. Don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't already, guys. Uh, we're, we're treading new ground here with the uh, the first look at the Lightburn Galvo uh, operation here. It's very exciting. Uh, guys, this looks stellar. This is yeah, working really is well. Work. Also, remember to check out the Master Laser Everything website. Yeah, masters.lasereverything.net, guys, if you want to support the channel. Um, and so that I can keep making videos like this. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of stuff over there for you. Bonus live streams uh, that we do all of the time. We do a uh, bonus podcast episode every week. So if you like the podcast, you get an extra one of those. Uh, the entire fiber and CO2 laser parameter libraries are available over there uh, as well. Um, and it's a great way to support the channel. So we can keep making content like this, keep, keep having fun, uh, keep learning. Um, so if, uh, if that's something that, that you enjoy and, and you appreciate, uh, the Laser Master Academy is the number one way to support the channel. You can find out more over at masters.lasereverything.net. Uh, this, this looks stellar. Um, obviously, this is not the best settings for this. Like I would have done maybe like a Z mark, right, <laughs> uh, for the steel cup. Um, but we don't have time for that because we're, we're live. Uh, and that, that would take a while. Uh, so, but this clearly uh, is doing a good job. Um, Mitchell sure. says, holy cow, is this a new machine or uh, is the software able to run on current machines? This is a private closed beta for Lightburn on EasyCAD control cards. So this is for all Galvo lasers currently in existence that run on EasyCAD 2. Uh, this, is, this is on the way for you. 
Um, you're, you're seeing a preview right now. Stuart, I'm glad to hear that you are enjoying the LMA, man. Thank you. I work really hard on it. Uh, and I'm really glad that it, it's helping you and making a difference. Uh, can we try a raster image? Uh, sure. Why not? Ra that's actually, that's a funny question because um, what do we always say? People are always like, uh, my rotary is not working. And I'm like, are you engraving a vector or are you engraving a raster? That's like my first question every time because raster is not supported on EasyCAD 2 in rotary mode. Uh, sure, we could try a raster um, really quick just to make this look pretty. I would I would love to uh, I'd like to run an anneal, but I don't think we have time. So uh, we'll just we'll just not run an anneal on this and it can just be ugly forever. Uh, in the meantime, let's try a photo, maybe something better. How about my ugly face? We can just slap right on. Mm. Yes, only because it's available because it was just in the Locos <laughs> folder here. Um, so we'll go ahead and run this. Uh, there's a raster for you. Um, and let's just frame it so we can see about how big it's going to be. That looks appropriate. I have no idea what we're going to do for settings. I, I guess something like this is fine. Uh, just for now, maybe like 500. Mm, let's just do the aluminum uh, like quick. 2000, like 80 should be fine. 37 frequency. Uh, same deal. I don't think I'm going to change anything in here. We're going to do half tone, 50 cells. Um, I think the DPI might still be a little high, but it doesn't really matter. The point is, like, does it work at all? Um, that's that's really what we're what we're looking for here. So let's go ahead and rotate this. It's an empty-ish area left on the tumbler, so I don't have to change how things are set up. And we'll go ahead and start uh same diameter same overlap same split size let's see what this does oh yep okay so that's doing something so uh no problem there <laughs> uh definitely works webcam is blocking uh you, you didn't miss out on much uh it's just these rotary marking settings came up um over here hi look there they are uh just hiding there but uh we'll let that run for a minute and actually because the webcam was blocking it we'll run through so uh, all i did was pop up into our image settings here oh i can't i actually can't open that while while we're running so we're just gonna have to wait uh but yeah it looks like it's working fine uh, i don't see i don't see any problem with that uh, ben says, I know this would be a push, but uh, is there any thoughts about a replacement controller card? I already ordered an EasyCAD 2 board. Uh, it is in the mail, and when it gets here, we will be downgrading the UV from UV uh, from uh, EasyCAD 3 to EasyCAD 2 for this specific reason. So um, as soon as that arrives, I'll be doing a full tutorial on how to backtrack to EasyCAD 2. If that's something that you're interested to do, uh, we will we will do it here. Let's blame uh, Lightburn for a uh, for a shortage. Did Easy Cat Two board soon? Yeah. Oh, I think Ben. I think what Ben meant was uh, is Lightburn going to make a card? Yeah. Which they're not. Jason was just like, no, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, uh, Stuart. If you want to learn about how Lightburn started, go listen to our podcast episode where we interview Jason Dory, the man behind the light burn tag there in live chat. Uh, we interview him and he goes into detail about why he started it, how he started it, uh, what his goals were, the journey that it took to get here. It's a really, really great, super informative episode. And Jason was an amazing guest. So uh, if you want to hear that conversation, go down into the, uh, the YouTube channel uh, under the Laser Source podcast playlist. It's like early-ish episode. It's like five or six, something like that pretty yeah. early on uh you'll see jason he's like he's like making a face and you know doing his thing so uh go mm -hmm. go check go check that out uh for sure jay says do i need to update my fiber hardware to run lightburn as long as you have an easy cad 2 easy cad light or cyclone knockoff easy cad 2 board you do not have to do any modification to your hardware whatsoever to run lightburn you just have to simply sit and wait for it to come out of beta all right, looks like we got some kind of image on there.
I, it's technically there. <laughs> It is technically there, and uh, that's the important thing, I suppose. Uh, just, just a quick look, just a proof of concept here for you. Uh, there you go, right? So you can see that image on there. It's there. So yes, uh, technically it works. Here's our here's our laser everything, by the way. I know that it's horribly ugly. We didn't use the right settings for this at all. Um, and this mess up up here, that was from me not setting things right the first time and having to stop it. That was not Lightburn's fault. But it's engraved on there. So, uh, I mean, rotary's working. It, it's effectively working, uh, no problem. Uh, if it looks backwards to you, that's because my Discord camera is backwards, not because it's actually backwards in real life. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, it's there, guys. It, it, it works. Uh, it, it, it works. How, how did your tests go, Patrick, with the uh, rotary there? Good. Yeah? About the same as yours. Yeah. No issues. Yep. Nice. Good. And uh, here are those image settings again. Just, just so you guys. Pictures. It's the 50, yeah. 22 angle, one pass, line interval. We're keeping it at 1,000 DPI. I, I know the webcam was blocking this, so I just wanted to pull that up for a second just to show you guys um, what what we had done while I was talking about it. Um, but, yeah, so so you, you good, good successful test, though, Patrick? Yeah, I ran a line and also ran a fill, and both look pretty good. Nice. Alicia says, thanks uh, someone for said, the demo. I'll really wait for easy CAD 3 support from Lightburn as, is it, as it is to slap in a Hemi in a Volkswagen. No. Who said that? Uh, James uh, Shelton. It's a dream come true. Never thought I'd... Uh, never... I've never used Lightburn, but I hate Easy Crash. Uh, everything about this will be superior to, to Easy CAD for standard yep. Easy CAD users. Uh, again, not 3D. We're not covering 3D here. We're not talking about 3D in this sense. Uh, eventually, we'll have a 3D laser in the shop, and we'll continue with the Easy CAD tutorials for 3D uses and things like that until maybe someday, super far down the road, uh, Lightburn adds support for that stuff, but uh, not in the foreseeable future. So. Um, that's really the only odd duck out right now. I'm sure easy CAD three 2d normal use support will come eventually. Uh, I know that they are working on or brainstorming pre working on like project mark features, uh, and things like that. So a lot of that kind of like curved item functionality is still going to come to Lightburn, Uh, just not the 3d stuff. Cause that's like a whole nother world. So, um, you know, I never say never, but uh, not in the pipe right right now. Uh, Team Olympus says, this is the best thing I've heard all year. EasyCat is awful and has been the reason uh, my fiber is not running. Lightburn is great. Thank you for the surprise. No problem. Uh, you know, the, the team over at Lightburn has been working tirelessly on this. Uh, and it's, it's so great to see and use. Uh, and play with and, and be, you know, be able to, to kind of work on, on this kind of stuff. Um, I've, I'm very privileged to be a part of it. I'm privileged to have these guys down here uh, figuring it out with me. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm excited to bring you guys updates. Uh, I've mentioned this a couple times throughout the day. We've recorded a bunch of content that will start popping out uh, after this live stream ends. I'm going to start editing. i got editing to do. Um, probably a lot of repeated stuff, but more condensed. Uh, but... Every time that Lightburn comes out with a new update to the beta, I will be bringing you guys in to show you everything that's been changed, fixed, uh, updated, added, removed. We're going to go through each update, uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys what's different um, from update to update. <laughs> Brent Roach says, Betty White <laughs> and Easy Cad, rest in peace. It's rough. Yeah. How many layers are supported in the new software? Yeah. Like a billion? Is there a limit to how many pens you can use in Lightburn? I don't think so. They're all there. I think that's the panel. 29 and two tools. There you go. Yep. Uh, keep smashing that like button. That's right. We're winding down here. I think we've talked about most everything we need to talk about. Um... 
I'll probably do a different episode where we set up a different lens to just show you guys what it looks like right now. But again, it's subject to change. Uh, all of this is subject to change. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually, uh, I'm going to close this out, guys. Uh, there we go. So it's just us. So, so we're hanging now um, because they're, they're not done. So anything that you've seen in today's video could be entirely different a month from now. Uh, we'll just have to see what they do. Thank you for the $5 super chat, Olympus. I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. Um, oh, okay. Lightburn says there is a limit to the number of pens. Uh, yes, because most DSPs have a limit. So that's fair. Um, I don't think EasyCAD does. Doesn't EasyCAD have a thing where you can like pick from a color palette, like literally, like, and just keep making pens? I don't know if there's a hard limit on that. We'll have to do some research. <laughs> about 256 or something yeah 250 256 yeah like the standard colors the 256 yeah um so i had i asked earlier uh but i had a customer walk up any low memory issues none ever on easy or light burn ever ever i've never have you guys ever seen a low memory problem with light burn no never ever never literally mm. never i mean unless your hardware just can't run it uh, I don't know. Did it work on the LMC V1 card or just works with the LMC V4? I don't, I don't know about the V1. Do any of us have that? I don't think so. I don't think any of us have a V1, uh, so I'm not sure. Uh, that I would take up with Jason. James Shelton says beer and pizza. Beer and pizza sounds good. I am really hungry right now. Uh, Jeremy Bailey says Easy Cat is 256. Is the confirm on that? Um, is there an email list we can join as well? Uh, you can subscribe to the channel. Uh, every time that Jason breathes and changes something uh, on the Lightburn website, uh, I will be making an update video here. So uh, this is a great place to get your Lightburn news if, uh, if that's something you're looking forward to. Doyle's never uh, had a single... Oh, nope, that's different. Um... Uh, Nanner's never had a single crash on Lightburn in his years of using it on diodes. Um, Doyle ran Lightburn on an RCA netbook. No problems. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. How well does the red dot work? Flawlessly. Uh, there's no, yep. no problem with the red dot at all. Red dot works fine. Brent Roach wants to get a light burn tattoo to get early access. Nice. Your eye. I think a light burn eyelid. tattoo is in my near future, guys. I, like, like right here, maybe. You know, like I'll have my heart and then like my other heart. But it'll be a dragon. Like Tony Stark. Yes. I want like a like the Iron Man right in the middle. I mean, Team it's a cool says, logo for a tattoo. When can I get it? Uh, 2022. We don't know yet. We're waiting. We're waiting for, uh, we're he waiting said, for information on that. Jason, Jason mentioned Q2-ish. Q2-ish? That would be nice. That's what he said Like when you scroll up. I'm sure it's up there. I'm not going to scroll up right now. I'll never find my the bottom again. Who cares? We just know it's coming. We know it's coming. That is the... We know it's coming. And I'm going to keep you guys updated uh, every step of the way. Do you guys feel like we we've sufficiently covered what we need to cover? I feel like I feel like we can. Uh, last last uh, uh, moments here, guys. Get your questions in now. Uh, we likely won't have Jason here in chat live with us for uh, all of these little update live streams as we go forward. So if you have a question, um, now's the time to ask it uh, for us or for Jason um, or whatever. Because uh, we're about to wrap here. I've got episodes to edit. Like I said. I've got a full episode coming out very soon uh, where we're going to do what we just did live, but in a much more condensed version uh, without stopping for like chat and stuff like that. Uh, it's already recorded, just needs to be edited. And, um, you know, yeah, uh, Matt, no problem at all. I'm, I'm so glad that you enjoyed it and, and had fun hanging out uh, with us for a little while here. Uh, we've also got a podcast episode coming out soon. Um, we just recorded that big live all cast podcast and then that has a bonus episode then we recorded another podcast episode about this announcement and that has a bonus episode all of that will probably be out very very shortly probably just on top of each other uh, all at once 
Uh, yep, thank you. Thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for joining, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, just really, really quick, last final plugs. Um, you guys probably know what I'm going to say, but if you haven't already, join the Discord. It's free. It's our free online community. It's linked down in the description. Over 2,000 members. Uh, everybody's exceptionally friendly. They love hanging out, chatting, seeing what you're working on, uh, helping each other with problems. It doesn't cost a penny. Link down in the description. Right next to the link to the Laser Master Academy, the number one way to support the channel. Uh, if you want to help out, give a little extra. Uh, sign up. It's masters.lasereverything.net. Comes with access uh, to bonus live streams. Um, we've got like just hours and hours and hours and hours of bonus live streams where we do real life work, uh, actual customer jobs in the shop live, uh, just kind of like normal day in the life stuff. Lots of tips and tricks in there that you can pick up on, uh, as well as bonus episodes of the podcast. If you enjoy listening to the Laser Source podcast, uh, there's twice as many episodes on the LMA waiting for you to listen. Uh, we really kind of cut loose and, and hang out after we record the main episodes, and they're, they're a lot of fun to listen to. Uh, and uh, the entire fiber laser, CO2 laser parameter libraries are in there. Uh, coming soon, UV and CO2 Galvo will be uh, joining the mix. Uh, and it's just another great community, just like the Discord, but like condensed. You know, it's like uh, the 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 really juicy stuff. So, um, you know, that's that's there for you too if you, if you want to support the channel. Uh, one more time, it's masters.lasereverything.net. We will, I've said this a hundred times, I'm going to say it one last time, be updating uh, the channel every time that we get a new uh, light burn beta kicked over to us. We're going to hop in, talk about what's been fixed, what's been changed, what's been updated, what's been removed. We're going to cover it all every step of the way from now until release and beyond. Uh, so make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit the notification bell so that you get notified when we upload new videos, uh, especially on this topic. And... Um, wow, thank you for the super chat, Stuart. That is a big one, and uh, it is most appreciated. Uh, that is very generous for you, sir. Um, wow. And I think, I think that's it. I think that was my whole spiel. I think I'm done. Um, we're good. Uh, also, I think Patrick has been linking it. Just check out the frequently asked questions from Lightburn. They have a, they're developing that. So just. Check that out. Make yeah, sure there's a link in the description as well. as well, I believe, yeah. uh, on that. And uh, as soon as this live stream ends, I will add a listing for the EasyCAD 2 boards. So if you guys want to buy an EasyCAD 2 board <laughs> in preparation, uh, I'll, I'll throw a link down to that as well because I remember people were asking about that. So I'll throw a link to uh, the, the place where I recommend getting them so that you know you get a good board. Uh, but that's it. Uh, pour one out for EasyCAD 2 boys. It's a goner. That's for sure. I've never heard truer words. Uh, Lightburn is working and uh this is this is a new era guys uh so thanks for being a part of it happy 2022 happy new year thank you staff for hanging out with me thank you viewers for watching and we will see you in the next one that's it guys have a great day enjoy your new year and uh get ready for light burn because it's coming <laughs>